It is time to react to some more police doing police things. I don't know why I'm interested in this right now. It's just a thing that I think is interesting to watch and interesting to react to with the with the chats. So we got cop getting fired and sued after this stop from Audit the Audit. This episode covers probable cause, excessive force, and vehicle searches. And it's brought to us by Police Activities channel. Be sure to check out the description below. And Police Activities, 5 million subscribers. There is a crazy amount of interest in stuff like this. I've realized that recently. There is so many channels related to police activities, detectives, interrogations, crimes, and things relating to those crimes. Like, I almost thought that true crime was more of a smaller subsect a smaller niche interest on the internet but these channels are absolutely massive you can make so much in terms of a youtube channel from uploading things that are related to police activity and the thing is it's mostly american police from what i've seen from these channels these are mostly american police so obviously everything that you hear and see in these videos isn't going to relate to you directly if you don't live in america which i mean i don't i live in the uk so there's not police officers running around brandishing guns 90% of the time, but I am going to America for a couple of weeks. So who knows, maybe this could be useful. That they deserve. On December 5th, 2020, Virginia National Guard Lieutenant Karan Nazario was driving in a newly purchased vehicle when Officer Daniel Crocker of the Windsor Police Department attempted to initiate a traffic stop for a potential license plate violation. Oh, I remember this. This was huge back in 2020. It's been a few years now, obviously. So it's the details I hate Easy, but I remember this being a really big thing Lieutenant back then. Rosario activated his turn signal and slowed down, but rather than pull over on the side of the dark road, he continued driving for about a mile until he stopped at a well-lit gas station. Probably a good thing to do. Probably a good idea. I mean, who knows what they're gonna do on the side of a, a dimly lit road. It's good to be around like security cameras, even though there's body cams on police officers, I understand that, but you wanna be around other people just, just in case things go awry. That It's always good to have other people that can corroborate your story officer in that situation. Officer Joe Gutierrez had joined during the pursuit and the officers exited their vehicles, drew their firearms and pointed Whoa. them at Lieutenant Nazario. What? Wait, wait, wait the, hold on. Wait, they pulled the... They they got the Glocks out already? Brother, you just you just saw him. Is this just because he drove for a little bit extra so he could pull over at the, the petrol station? Is that all? They're like, oh, we need to we need to maybe shoot this guy now? Like what what if he I mean he still pulled over. Uh, he doesn't really seem to be a threat to anyone else right now. Not that they can tell that he may have a weapon in his car or anything like that, but that's that, that's the first thing you do. It's it's a gun and it's not even like a taser. Never roll the window down! Put your hands out the window! Turn the vehicle off, put your hands out the window! Put your hands out the window and turn the vehicle off! Who said what was going on? Was that the person in the car that said it was what, what's going on? I mean, he's getting arrested. Well, he's not getting arrested. He's getting pulled Put over. Put your hands out the window! Jeez, he's, he's screaming. Come around. Bro, wait, hold on, hold on, what? He said, turn your vehicle off and put your hands out the window. Put your hands out the window, put your hands out the window. Turn your vehicle off and put your hands out the window. So the vehicle is, is currently, uh, we can kind of see the lights are like still on on the car, right? So he's screaming, put your hands out the window, turn your vehicle off, turn, put your hands out the window, turn your vehicle off. Like two different things. You, you, can't, you can't do that at the same time. You can put one out and then have that one in and then they might, I don't know, maybe oh, they'll see that as a threat. Let me see your hands. Dude, here in the woods, he's not complying is like terrifying in any kind of police situation. Like, oh, you just need to comply. Just, just comply, bro. Just comply. Occupants are in the vehicle. What's going on? How many occupants are in your vehicle? It's only myself. Why are your weapons drawn? What's going on? Open the door slowly and step out. Open the door. I'm not getting out the vehicle. What's going on? Get out the car. Okay, I need to go back. What was this for originally? Driving in a newly purchased vehicle when Officer Daniel Crocker of the Windsor Police Department attempted to initiate a traffic stop for a potential license plate violation. Lute this is for a, a what? A license plate violation? Y brother. They're right here, what's going on? Get out of the car now! Get out of the car! What's now! going on? Get out of the car oh! now! Get out of the car now! I'm serving this country and this is how I'm treated? Yo, look, guess what? I'm a veteran too. I learned to obey. That's Get out of the car. What's going on? He said, guess what? I'm a veteran too. I learned to obey. Jesus Christ. These motherfuckers think they have so much, so much power. I mean, they have power in the in the palm of their hands. They got a gun. They're like, hey, well, I mean, we're allowed to kill you. Obviously, they're not allowed to kill people, but like, on? they feel like they are. What's going on? You're fixing to ride the lightning, son. I'm sorry, what? Dude, there's two guns the at the now. guy. What? 
This is a license plate violation. Is is that really that important? Like, bro, listen, if we don't sort out these license plate violations, the country is going to crumble into dust. This is the biggest thing affecting the country right now. The most national problem is we need to figure out these license plate violations. And anyone that does not comply with us in sorting out these license plate violations must be grinded into the dirt. What's going Get out on? The car what even now. is that? Work with us and we'll talk to you. Get out the car. You receive an order. Obey it. I'm you received an order, obey it! Gee, I, oh, I hate it when people talk like that, man. Like, gee, why can't you just be like a normal human being? I hate- like, Why aren't police officers trained to be like normal human beings? Instead of just, we will use excessive force constantly, all of the time, and just destroy you. I'm, a, I'm honestly afraid to get out, can I- Yeah, you, you should be! Gone? Get out! He said, I'm honestly afraid to get out, and he said, yeah, you should be! Why? Why? Why should you be afraid to get out? Why? If- if you are- serving and protecting people and you see a license plate violation why should the license plate violator be afraid to get out the car even though you're yelling at them to get out of the car that seems a bit contradictory isn't it are you just trying to spike fear in someone because you feel like you can you're like i i have an opportunity to make someone really really scared right now and i'm just gonna do it because i have all the power and i they have to do what i say and they're not doing what i say immediately so like i'm really mad and upset and my penis is small too what's get going out. on what get out the I car do? get out now i have not committed any crime you're being stopped by tribal violence you're not cooperating bro why is he holding his gun like that i'm sorry but like this fucking this goober this goofy goober right here is like Holding his his pistol like sideways, like the cool sideways style. He's like, yeah, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit him sideways through the, through the window. Drive. Officer Gutierrez informs Lieutenant Nazario that he's being detained for a traffic violation and obstruction of justice under Section 46.2-715 of the Virginia Code. Quote: License plates assigned to a motor vehicle shall be attached to the front and the rear of the vehicle. And Section 46.2-716 requires that license plates quote be securely fastened to the motor vehicle in a position to be clearly visible and in a condition to be clearly legible. Although Lieutenant Nazario did have a cardboard temporary plate taped to the inside of the rear window, Officer Crocker claimed not to see it when he initiated the traffic stop due to window tint. That's it? This is what you're like threatening to kill someone over? Is he just didn't have a license plate on the back of his car? Why are they so scared about like not having a license plate for it? Do they think he's like a, a drug runner or something? What? Uh is it that big of a deal? After the encounter, Lieutenant Nazario filed a lawsuit against Officer Gutierrez and Officer Crocker, and in a decision resolving yeah, no the parties' motions for summary judgment, U.S. District Judge Roderick C. Young concluded that the officers had probable cause to stop Lieutenant Nazario for potentially violating the license plate statutes. Okay, did they also have probable cause to probably give him night terrors for the rest of his life by threatening to just murder him straight up by pointing guns at him because he had a fucking license plate that wasn't showing? You could just pull off and be like, hey, uh, sorry, like, you just got a, like, license plate going on there. Instead, they immediately jump onto the scene, whip out the guns immediately, threaten him, just scream at him to get out and get on the floor and then say, yeah, you should be scared to get out and get on the floor. You should be scared to follow the orders that I'm giving you, but you still have to help. You have to follow them, by the way, or else who knows what will happen? Who knows? My, my finger is slippy sometimes. Additionally, according to section 46.2-817 of the Virginia Code, quote, any person who, having received a visible or audible signal from any law enforcement officer to bring his motor vehicle to a stop, drives such motor vehicle in a willful and wanton disregard of such signal, or who attempts to escape or elude such law enforcement officer is guilty of a class two misdemeanor. Okay, but he didn't really try to escape or elude them. He, he just like drove normally to a petrol station. It's not like he was doing Tokyo drift around the corner. It's not like he was going off GTA ramps and doing backflips trying to trying to escape the fuzz. In his opinion, Judge Young referred to several out-of-jurisdiction cases, including the 2018 case of Manners versus Canella, where the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals held that probable cause existed to arrest an individual for violating a similar eluding statute when he continued driving for two minutes after a police cruiser turned on its lights and sirens in order to stop at a well-lit gas station. And Judge Young ultimately determined that the officers had probable cause to charge Lieutenant Nazario with eluding. Well, I mean, 
Obviously, people are gonna be scared to pull over on the side of a road, especially at like 10 at night when it's dark, when you don't know what you're getting pulled over for. Finally, section 18.2-460 of the Virginia Code states that, quote, if any person without just cause knowingly obstructs any law enforcement officer in the performance of his duties, or fails or refuses without just cause to cease such obstruction when requested to do so by such law enforcement officer, he is guilty of a class one misdemeanor. In the 2007 case of Collins versus Commonwealth, the Virginia Court of Appeals upheld a conviction under If he had just stopped and asked that they could go to a well place? No, what the fuck? What do you mean if they just stopped and asked that they could go to a well place? Do you see how they interacted with this guy? Immediately? They were screaming at him, telling him to get out of the car, commanding him to get out of the car. He didn't know what the fuck was going on, pointing guns at him immediately, saying, yeah, you should be scared to get out of your car, by the way. If they had pulled him over in, in a dark place, He'd be even more scared, most likely, because there's no cameras apart from the police body cams that could see it, and also there wouldn't be any other people around. And they would say fucking no! Like, you know what they would say? They would say, GET ON THE GROUND! They would say, get on the ground, you are fucked, it is over for you. For this statute, based in part on a driver's refusal to comply with a lawful order to exit her vehicle. And in the 2005 case of Coffee versus Morris, the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Virginia concluded that there was probable cause to arrest a passenger who failed failed to obey an officer's order to remain in her vehicle during a traffic stop. Citing these cases, Judge Young held that the officers had probable cause to arrest Lieutenant Nazario for obstruction because he, now quoting, refused to comply with a lawful order to exit his vehicle. Sig violation, I do not have to get out the vehicle. You haven't even told really? me why I'm being stopped. Really? Get your get, hands get off me. What is he doing? Get out of the car. Get your hands off me, get please. The get your hands off what, what is he doing? Is he like trying to pull him out the window or something? I Dude, it's, it is insane how much they're like failing to achieve anything right now. Wait, are they spraying him now? Air Force. Is that pepper spray? Dude. Dude, he's in the car. What kind of fucking threat is this? He's not threatening you. He's just spraying him. Get out of the car. Get out of the car now. That's up. Sir, just get out of the car. I'm trying to breathe. Get out of the car and get on the ground now. Get yeah, wouldn't it be a little bit harder to get out of the car and get on the ground when he's like struggling to breathe now? What are you, a specialist corporate are you? I'm a lieutenant. Dude, I would be afraid to put my hand like behind my back with these guys. I'm just saying, like, with the way they've been so far, going to take your seatbelt off involves like putting your hand like behind your back. I'd be terrified to take my seatbelt off now. Lieutenant, get, get out of the car! car. You, you made this way more difficult than had me if you just complied. Get out of the car! I'm reaching for my seatbelt. Fine! Take your seatbelt off and get out of the car! Straight on the ground! Is your commanding Let's officer go. available? I wonder, is, is this like normal for police officers? I feel like people that are made to, or hired to diffuse situations and bring situations to like calm and conclusions should be a little bit less on edge all the time. I actually wonder, I've never really had many interactions with police officers in general. I've had very, I had no interactions with the police officers in the UK, ever. Uh, I had one with an American one. And it's because we were driving to Boston through the middle of the night. We left at like 8 p.m. We arrived at like 5 a.m. So it was through the middle of the night. It was like 2 a.m. We're driving on the road and we get pulled over. And the, the officer like comes up. Obviously, in this situation, I haven't got a fucking clue what's going on. I'm in the back of the car. And they're just like, so, uh, so where are you going? And we're like, oh, we're just like driving to Boston. We're like, oh, okay, okay. Okay. He's like, he's like got, got the, he's got like the pistol and the holster and all that. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. And they just say, uh, so you're driving through the night. We're just like, yep. Yeah. Just, just driving through the night. They're like, hmm. All right. Well, you best be on your way. I'm like, okay. We keep driving. That was, that was scary though. <laughs> First time I've ever been pulled over by a, by a police officer. Not a, not a fun interaction at all. Get on the ground. Get on the ground now. Can you please talk to me? Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Why am I being treated like this? Why? Because you're not cooperating. Get on the ground. This is really Come on, sir. <laughs> sir, what? Just what you're This is really... This is up. Why haven't they like told him what happened yet? I guess because it sounds ridiculous. Like we're doing this because of you because of a license plate violation. If they said that now, he'd be like, "Are you fucking kidding me? Really? That's it? After all this, like they went immediately to 100." So I guess that's not, well, that's why they're not even saying like why they pulled him over in the first place. When Lieutenant Nazario fails to comply with the officer's orders to exit the vehicle, officer. I love how he said fails to comply. He's like, fails to comply. Gutierrez pepper sprays him multiple times and orders Lieutenant Nazario to exit the vehicle or he will be sprayed again. What? Does he know how much pepper spray actually fucks someone up? Like, 
it's it's honestly surprised that he was able to like even get out of the car at that point. Like being pepper sprayed really messes you up. As Lieutenant Nazario exits the vehicle. The officers order him to get on the ground. And when he does not comply, Officer Gutierrez knees him twice. And the officers eventually succeed in forcing Lieutenant Nazario to the ground and handcuffing him. As we have discussed many times on ATA, the Supreme Court determined- You have to get sprayed to have it? Yeah, so he should, he should know like what he's going through right in now. In the 1989 case of Graham versus Connor, whether or not an officer's use of force is excessive depends on whether it is, now quoting, objectively reasonable in light of the facts and circumstances confronting them, without regard to their underlying intent or motivation. Okay, so was that objectively reasonable use of force for the license plate violation. I pff, that I'll leave that one up to the lawyers. In the Graham case, the court outlined three non-exclusive factors that courts must weigh when determining if force is excessive. Now, quoting, the severity of the crime at issue, whether the suspect poses an immediate threat to the safety of the officers or others, and whether okay. he's actively resisting arrest or attempting to evade arrest by flight. Okay, so the severity of the crime, the severity of the crime was he he didn't have a license plate. The whether the suspect poses an immediate threat to the safety of others, uh, he just drove normally to a petrol station and then pulled over and then put his hands on the window, and whether he is actively resisting arrest or, or attempting to evade arrest by flight. I, it doesn't, it doesn't, apart from like not lying down, I don't know if they have anything here. Additionally, in the Fourth Circuit, which includes Virginia, courts also consider the extent of the plaintiff's injuries, as the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals noted in the 2019 case of Hupp versus Cook. In his decision regarding summary judgment in Lieutenant Nazario's lawsuit, Judge Young weighed these four factors and determined that the first and third factors weighed in favor of Lieutenant Nazario, that the fourth factor weighed in the officer's favor, and that, now quote, the second factor can favor either party, depending on in whose favor the evidence is viewed. Alt what do you mean in whose favor the evidence is viewed, right? The evidence is the evidence, regardless of in, in whose favor you're viewing it. What, is, is that like you're just innate bias towards one person or the other, but towards like the police or the the victim in that situation? I mean, the evidence is not, it's not changing, Maybe. right? Judge Young concluded that he could not determine whether or not the force was excessive at the summary judgment stage, as really the reasonableness of an officer's actions is a question for a jury, but ultimately granted summary judgment to the officers, finding they were entitled to qualified immunity because, now quoting, there is neither controlling authority nor a consensus of persuasive authority for the proposition that there is a clearly established right prohibiting the aiming of firearms, the use of threats, or the use of OC spray against a suspect who has repeatedly refused to comply with lawful commands to exit a vehicle. Can you open up the window for my dog? Oh no, he has a dog in the car. Dude, no, they, they pepper sprayed the dog, dude. Oh no, if he had like some residual spray wafted in his general direction, I'm gonna be so sad. Can you open up the window, please? Yes, Stand yes up. we will. Stand up, okay? Okay, at least they're opening the window for the dog, right? Is there any weapons on you, sir? No. Okay. Any weapons in the vehicle? Yes. Okay. Does your dog have a gun, sir? What? For my safety and yours, I have respect for law enforcement. No, you don't. So no, you don't. I believe that he has respect for law enforcement. I just don't think that law enforcement has respect for him. I believe that he's, you know, one of these guys that's like, oh, you know, the police are good. They do good things in general. And he's probably like, caught really off guard by this. I think he's probably, it's totally like shaking him to his core, right? Like his whole life he's been, he, like, he's a military guy, right? He's a lieutenant in the National Guard. So he probably has a generally pretty positive view of law enforcement and and the, the army, et cetera, et cetera, police forces and all that. And this is probably shaking him. It's make, making him wonder like, what, what did I do to deserve this? Because you're supposed to, you're supposed to deserve it when you get really messed up by the police, right? You're supposed to deserve it. So what did I do in this situation? Like what, was it, was it just because I drove to a petrol station? I don't understand. He's probably like, it's probably shaking him a little bit. Dude, you felt, hold on, you felt more comfortable here, okay? Coming here was not the problem. The problem is when you were- Whoa, what? Wait, 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 coming here was not the problem? What? What the fuck were they so aggro for then? Are you kidding me? You said coming to the petrol station wasn't actually an issue. And then it was actually totally fine. What? You need to get out of the car. When we got here, you stepped out. No, no, no. The problem was not because he refused to get out of the car. You had guns trained on him from frame one. They immediately pulled him over and then trained the guns on him immediately. What the fuck are you talking about? I can promise you this would have been over by now. Okay, well, specifically, he was asking about weapons. What kind of weapons you got here? It's right there. I'm sure he's sorry already. Right no, I mean, you just what got a handgun? You got yeah, a long gun? I got it. Man, I wonder how they would have treated him if he wasn't wearing his, like, his scruffs. What do they call it? The, the army, the army get up the, the camo stuff, Matt? Is the dog okay? Please tell me the dog's okay. 
Does the dog have a gun? Oh, oh okay. So he has he has a pistol in the car. Are they hard to search him? They don't have like, what do you, oh, okay, okay. I'm not a lawyer, but do they have like probable cause to go into his van from, from the license plate violation? That means they can search your car now? Is it illegal? Well, I suppose we'll find out. We'll find out if it's illegal. Enters Lieutenant Nazario's vehicle and searches for his firearm. After he locates the firearm and exits the vehicle, he radios the serial number to dispatch. And when dispatch confirms that the firearm is not stolen, he returns it to the vehicle. Although there are situations officers may conduct a warrantless search of a vehicle incident to the arrest of a recent occupant, as the Supreme Court outlined in the 2011 case of Davis versus United States, such a search is only constitutional, quote, if the arrestee is within reaching distance of the vehicle during the search, or if the police have not. reason to believe that the vehicle contains evidence relevant to the crime of arrest. Which, I mean, he's not hes not getting arrested even, but they don't have to go in the car to know that he doesn't have a license plate on the back of his car, right? Likewise, under the so-called automobile exception to the warrant requirement, which was established by the Supreme Court in the 1925 case of Carroll versus United States, officers may search a vehicle without a warrant if they have probable cause to believe it contains contraband or evidence of criminal activity. And under which, I mean, why would you even think that it does? Because all they did was see a license plate not being there, pulled him over, and then just screamed at him, you know, pepper sprayed him. That there's no reason to believe that there's anything in his car that is contraband or anything like the that. so-called plain view doctrine, which the Fourth Circuit outlined in the 2012 case of U.S. versus Davis, officers may seize an object without a warrant if, quote, the officer was lawfully in a place from which the object could be viewed, the officer had a lawful right of access to the seized items, and the incriminating character of the items was immediately apparent. In his lawsuit, Lieutenant Nazario argued that Officer Crocker's entrance into his vehicle to search for the firearm and his examination of the firearm for its serial number both constituted illegal searches. Because they didn't ask if they could go into the car. They didn't have a reason to go into the car. There's no reason to think that, that if he had a firearm that it would have been stolen or anything like that or anything other than a normally bought weapon so i mean this is also very confusing to me because I, I just we just don't have that kind of issue here we just don't have guns here but th he has no reason to think that it's a stolen gun judge young determined that the search of the vehicle was not justified as a search incident to arrest because nothing in the vehicle was in lieutenant nazario's quote-unquote reaching distance as he now quoting was handcuffed surrounded by a police officer and two medics and his arm was being held by defendant gutierrez throughout the search your honor I put forward the idea that he had the gum gum fruit and thus could reach distances that which a normal person could not have and thus could reach inside of his car. I so therefore say that it was within reach and distance because he could do gum gum pistol and grab his gun. And because, now quoting again, the firearm was not relevant evidence for the crimes of eluding or obstruction of justice, which were the crimes of arrest. Likewise, Judge Young concluded that the automobile exception and the plain view doctrine did not apply because all the facts apparent to the officers at the time would have pointed to Lieutenant Nazario's possession of the firearm being lawful. As so he got arrested for being scared to get out the car. Man, I'd be scared to get out the car too, dude. I've seen so many situations where like any kind of movement, you just get blasted. Officer Crocker knew that Lieutenant Nazario had a concealed carry permit. Accordingly, Judge Young ruled that the search of the vehicle was unlawful and granted summary judgment to Lieutenant Nazario as to his claim that Officer Crocker violated his Fourth Amendment rights through an illegal search. However, yeah, they just went Judge fishing Young around also stuff. determined that, quote, the separate act of calling in the serial number was not an unlawful search because Lieutenant Nazario, now quoting, did not have a privacy interest in the serial number. Now, in reaching this conclusion, Judge Young relied on the 1992 case of U.S. versus Kinney, where the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals noted that, quote, the only fact that officers could determine from the serial numbers was whether the guns were contraband, which, but they shouldn't have got it in the first place, obviously. I'm quoting again, cannot be the source of a privacy expectation that our society is prepared to consider reasonable. Oh, no right. So they're saying that, hey, listen, if we search for your serial number to make sure that it's not a stolen gun, like, listen, you can't, you can't do your First Amendment. You can't do your, I, I plead the fifth on my gun being stolen or not. That's unreasonable. Breath. No, is my dog okay? Yes, sir. Yeah, my partner's checking on. You all right if I pop the trunk? Yes, sir. Oh, hey, the dog. Yeah, what happened? I went to the block. Okay, I don't think they pepper sprayed the dog at the very least. I don't know if the pepper spray would have wafted into the back like that. I'm glad. That's a good, that's a good result. I looked out the mirror and I saw guns drawn. I put my hands out. 
and we told you, we identified ourselves, we told you to step out of the vehicle, and all you had to do was comply, and we'd have been done by now, okay? All right, Mr. Nazario. All you had to do is comply. Let's let's just quickly go back um, to the start and just just refresh our memories on exactly how that interaction went. They're in the vehicle. What's going on? How many occupants are in your vehicle? It's only myself. Why are your weapons drawn? What's going on? Open the door slowly. And step out. Open the door. I'm not getting out the vehicle. What's going on? Get out the car. What's going on? See all. <laughs> Listen, we're not robots, right? That's fucking terrifying to be in. You can either sit here with you until you get your eyes back where you can see, and I mean at a good distance, you're safe to drive, okay? Go do your deployment. Go continue serving my country, which I respect and I thank you for, okay? Or <laughs> we can push the issue, write you tickets for no uh, license plate displayed, and for resisting, or not resisting, uh, obstructive justice. I don't even need to go that route because that route makes the army get involved. Oh, dude, he's trying to weasel out of it so bad. He knows he fucked up. He knows he's in the wrong. And he's like, listen, we can just go our separate ways. We can just forget this ever happened. Or you can push the issue and I could like arrest you if you want. Do you want that? Wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't that be fun for me to do that to you right now? And I know how they are. But if you plan on making a uh, career or even six years or whatever, it's they're really good at manipulation, I will say. They're like, hey, listen, I love that you serve the country. I love this country, too. I have so much respect for you, so we can just go our separate ways because I have that respect for you, right? Because I respect you so much, we can just call it quits right now. But if you want to push the issue, then we're going to have to do some... We're going to have to go That's for it. Deal. I don't It's always better for the command to hear it from you than somebody else. Especially the law enforcement. That's never a good thing. Go ahead, let help Once Lieutenant Nazario was... I can't believe he was still cuffed while they were have that... Why was he still cuffed? Why was he still cuffed while they were having that conversation, man? Is that part of the intimidation strat? They're like, oh, by the way, like, we could do something right now. We, we have you dead to rights. Well, we don't have you dead to rights on actual, like, law breaking, but we have you dead to rights in the terms that we have your arms behind your back and you can't do anything physically. It's got to be an intimidation was thing. able to drive, the officers allowed him to leave without any citations, and no charges were ever filed against him. On April 11th, 2021, approximately four months after the encounter and less than a week after footage of the traffic stop went viral, Officer Gutierrez Gutierrez was fired for failing to follow department policy during the interaction with Lieutenant Nazario. While discussing the termination, Windsor Police Chief Rodney Riddle told the press that he quote-unquote lost faith in Officer Gutierrez's ability to serve the community and Okay, so in theory, if a person that is not a police officer whips a gun out on someone, threatens them, and then pepper sprays them, and then holds them for a period of time, right? That's a crime, right? If you do not do it in like the actual lawful execution of your position as a police officer, that would not only be a fireable offense, but it should be a crime. So why did he just get fired? He just got fired. But what this guy actually did was he threatened someone with a gun and then pepper sprayed him, assaulted him, held him like on the ground, kicked him a bench. You just, you fucking kicked him. He was just like kicking him as well for, for nothing. Why that's a, why do you just get fired for that? It's like you have a second health bar when you're a police officer. And if you do something that is, that would put, get you put in prison immediately as a normal person, it just depletes your first health bar. Like you might get fired. Sometimes you don't even get fired. You just, you might get fired, it depletes your first health bar. And it's like, okay, well you had your one chance now. Sometimes you can just like do it over and over again in, in some uh, areas of, of being a police. You can just do it constantly. So you have like eight health bars, but then as soon as you're not a police officer anymore, you do any of this shit, dude, dude, you're in prison for life. That's it's done. Due to social media posting and media coverage of the stop, there was no way that officer Gutierrez could engage in the community in an effective manner anymore. Although so he admitted that the officer was getting trolled on Twitter. Missed opportunities to verbally de-escalate that situation. To That's why I said that at the start. Like, why are they so aggro 100% right at the start? Even though they said, like, towards the end, oh, it wasn't that you came to a petrol station. That's not the problem. The problem is you didn't get out of the car immediately and lie on the ground. But they started the interaction, weapons drawn, screaming. So why did they not start with, a, I don't know, a de-escalation tactic? Like, just be like, hey, uh, we're just going to check something. Like, we just have to do, it's just like a minor little, uh, there's something wrong with your car. We need to check over real quickly. 
uh, sir, and then you can be on your way. Because he wasn't threatening anyone. He wasn't being violent towards anyone. Why is the first thing that you do scream at them with guns drawn to get on the ground? That's not a normal thing to do. That is not a normal interaction that anyone should have to have with anyone because they didn't have a fucking license plate on the back of their car. Engage Mr. Nazario in a positive manner and use language to gain compliance from him, Chief Riddle defended his decision to keep Officer Crocker on the force, explaining that, now quoting again, Officer Crocker had just graduated from the police academy back in in October and was still in his field training phase. Okay, never mind. If you are an officer that has just graduated from police academy and you do these uh, crimes, then it's not only is it not a crime, you get three health bars. You get your, you get your, oh no, guys, I'm new health bar. And then you get your police health bar. And then maybe, maybe you'll get fired after that. And then you have like your normal health bar, which is you get arrested after that. And noting that Officer Crocker made several attempts to de-escalate verbally. A criminal investigation what? was launched when? into Officer... Wait, when did he try to de-escalate? Was that after they had cuffed him and he was on the ground pepper sprayed? Is that, <laughs> were they trying to de-escalate then? They're like, okay, now he's really not a threat. He's like paralyzed. He's on one health point. He's also confused. He's stunned. We put, we put every single AOE effect on him and now we can start to de-escalate. Gutierrez's conduct. And Special Prosecutor Anton Bell determined that although Officer Gutierrez should be investigated for potential civil rights violations, he should not be criminally charged. In a letter dated July 29, 9th, 2022, the special Why? prosecutor wrote that, quote, Although I find the video very disturbing and, frankly, unsettling, Gutierrez's use of force to remove Nazario did not violate state law as he- I guess the police is just the state's allowing a use of violence. Like, the state is allowed to use violence, and it's lawful that the state uses violence. Sometimes, like, very, very heavy-handed violence, like, way too much violence, and it's just, like, allowed. It's just like, well, we need to. We need to be able to do that. He right? had given multiple we need to, we need, commands we need to do that all the time. Nazario to exit the vehicle. Virginia's attorney general also launched an investigation after this incident, and on December 30th, 2021, filed a lawsuit against the town of Windsor based on evidence of discriminatory, unconstitutional policing allegedly uncovered during the months-long investigation. According to the attorney general, the investigation revealed, quote, huge disparities in enforcement against African-American drivers. I didn't even, uh, I mean, I, I kind of noticed that. I noticed that the, the victim was, uh, the victim was African-American and the two police officers were white. I, I don't want to, I don't want to jump to the conclusion that everyone's racist, but like, why has this happened so much? And a troubling I don't, lack of policies sad. and procedures to prevent discriminatory or unconstitutional policing. Lieutenant Nazario claimed that the officers had unreasonably seized him in violation of the Fourth Amendment by aiming their firearms at him, giving conflicting commands, and making threatening statements. And... I, I was saying the turn off your car and also put your hands on the window at the same time command is, that's a scary one. I remember there was once a situation where there was a guy that was getting arrested on the floor and they were like, like crawl over to me, stop, stop, like roll over, crawl, just stop, stop, do this, do that, go this direction, go that direction. And they ended up just getting shot. The guy just got shot. So I, I think about that and I'm like, damn, that's scary, man. A jury awarded Lieutenant Nazario $2,685 in compensatory damages from Officer Gutierrez after finding him liable for assault and $1,000 in punitive damages against Officer Crocker for his illegal search on the vehicle. They got, he got $3,600 and that's it? That's it! ...that neither officer had falsely imprisoned or battered Lieutenant Nazario, that Officer what? Crocker did not assault him, and that Officer Gutierrez was not liable for the illegal search of the vehicle. Lute what?! That's crazy! Damn, you just get different rules when you're a police officer. You can just fucking go in the streets like pepper spray folk that don't deserve it. That's insane. No, dude, it wasn't his fault. He totally deserved it, man. Nazario filed an appeal with the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals on June 15th, 2023. And as of the date of writing this episode, the case is still pending. Oh, That's insane. Officer Gutierrez and Officer Crocker get an F for unnecessarily pointing their fire on- Jeez, yeah, no wonder. My God, that's insane. I can't believe that. I actually cannot believe they said it. Oh no, actually pepper spraying him was totally fine. And like <laughs> pulling out the car and like shoving on the ground and like kicking him while he was on the floor and then arresting him and putting their things on. Like, like I was, that was all totally good. And then threatening him, you know, the intimidation, keeping the handcuffs on afterwards. There's video evidence. I mean, at that point, what do you do? What do you, what do, you do? You watch all that and you're like, uh, no, that was totally not her fault. It's like, how, how, do you, how do you be this insane? I, I don't believe that at all. That's crazy. Anyway, that was uh, Audit the Audit. And if you want to see more stuff like this, you can go and subscribe to the channel. I highly recommend it. There's a lot of videos. I do a lot of videos on this kind of topic uh, very frequently. So go ahead, check it out. Links in the description. And if you want to see more of my face, then you can subscribe to the More Powers YouTube channel.